You know, my day was just made because while we were hearing the beautiful song from Look Up, I looked to see, I looked up to see who was here. Evis! Oh my gosh, Evis, hello. Oh, even if it was just you and I, my morning would have been made. That's so good. Hey, Wyatt. Hi, Graham. Evis, you may not have met my grandchildren. I have four, and two of them I know are watching. Hi, Wyatt. Hi, Graham. I'm so excited you're here because Ha is going to do something extraordinary having to do with animals today. So you'll have to watch. And Shane, it was good to see you in your front yard yesterday. That was a fun drive party, right? So if you happen to have hopped into this story time and I haven't met you, I'm Deborah Jung, and I'm in Fort Worth, Texas, and it's kind of cloudy this morning, you know, but, but it's a good day. It's a really good day for a story, and we've got a couple of guests that before we get going, I just have to, as you know, we're reading Caps for Sale, and we're going to get that to that in a second, but um, Kermie and I and all my friends also have a very special guest or two, so I want to introduce them, so... Kermie, I'm putting you right here. First of all, this monkey was living in my room, in my house. Actually, I said my room, but it's really not mine. It's my grandkids' room. Look at his hair. He's a sweet monkey and, and really, really soft. Lovely to sleep with. And here's the other thing that I wanted to show you. Tigger has on a mask. This is so cool. Yesterday, we were doing a drive party. We went to my friend, our friends, the Johnsons, and we went to say hello to Ethan, who is one of our tech people, a brilliant sound designer and engineer, and his mom, Karen, came out of the house and pitched us a sussy, a present. She pitched us some quite artistic masks, and so Tigger is wearing it today. Thank you, Karen. Tigger is wearing it because I think Tigger if that makes you feel safer, and we know it is, it is one of those wonderful things we're learning to be safe right now. If Tigger can wear a mask, any of us can, because you know Tigger. And, but guess what? When he bounces, it doesn't fly off. I mean, it's the perfect mask, don't you think? All right, I just had to point that out before we started reading, you know, the new guest. And so Kermie has extra friends right here, which is great. All right, this is a book. I think I've known about this book since I was 21, and that's been a little bit ago, just a, a few years, and I know this book, and the reason I do is I've always gotten to have a job where I work with kids, and part of that was telling stories that kids act out, and so I found this book, I don't even know how it's been so long, I found this book years ago because it's the perfect book for a bunch of kids to act out, right? And so, Caps for Sale has been on my shelf. I can't even remember. I think I bought it for myself. But who knows? Who knows? It does have, as we know, you should always peek inside the cover. It does have my name in it right there. And it's uh, my handwriting. So, there you go. I gave it to myself. You should always give yourself books. And so when we look just inside this cover, then what we learn immediately is, and the most important piece of information I like at the beginning, <clears throat> is who wrote it and who is the artist? Who is the illustrator? Who illustrated the book? Who is the artist? And in this instance, it is the story and pictures are by the same person. And you know where she was born? Russia, and her name is so cool. She's the only Esper I know. Well, I don't know her, but know of her. I do have a friend whose name is Esther, but Esper, that's really beautiful. And Slabotkina. Ooh, Slabotkina. Sounds Russian, doesn't it? It is Russian. She immigrated to the U.S., which means she came to live in the U.S. when she was in her 20s. And so she and her family came from Russia, as we know, all of the United States are people from all over the world. And so I love that right here. She tells us that Caps for Sale is one of the most, oh, she doesn't say it. They say it about her. Caps for Sale is one of the most popular children's books ever written. That's pretty, that's pretty big. That's a pretty big deal. And it says, a story full of hilarious confusion. 
So, confusion's great. It's the best to act out. You need some confusion because you have to figure stuff out in a story, right? So, caps for sale, a tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. I want you to look back at the cover for a moment. I'm not going to tell you what to look for, but look very carefully and see if you see somebody besides the peddler. Have you found them? Hmm. We'll talk later. There's a bit of a hint on the front of what's to come. And look how much I love this book. Ah, the front's out. That's just because I love it so much. You know, when you love on a book or a stuffed animal, you know, it gets kind of ragged, but it makes it more beautiful. So, Esper has left a little message just inside, which makes me say, I need to go research a bit more because I'm wondering if these are children of Esper's. You know, you can Google almost anything. It says, to Rosalind and Emmy Jean and to their grandfather who loved to read to them. I know an Evie Jean, Evie Jean Tebow, Emmy Jean, to Rosalind and Emmy Jean and to their grandfather who loved to read them. Okay, read to them. I'm putting this over to the side so we don't lose it. I'll have to get it back in there. I'll stick it back in and make sure it stays there. Oh, here it comes. Oh, I have to tell you, as you look at this, this from a distance, and I'll make sure it's closer, Esper was an artist first. She lived she, till she was 93 years old, so she was an artist a long time. But the first thing that she studied was painting and sculpture, and she made these incredible collages. And in the U.S., she's quite famous because she's an abstract painter, right? She was a very famous abstract painter. So she was a painter first, and then people started asking her to draw pictures for their books, and then she wrote a book. Pretty cool. I just thought you painters, you artists would want to know. That's how it started. Ah, uh, here we go. Once there was a peddler who sold caps, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. <laughs> Look how neatly they're stacked. How does he do that? That's amazing. There are lots of places in the world where people carry things on top of their heads. Look at him. Ooh, I quite like his trousers. Look at his pants. I'd like to have some of those. Wouldn't you? I mean, those are cool. Those would be a good costume at Kids Who Care. The little village. Okay, well, he didn't carry his wares. Those are the things he's going to sell because a peddler is a salesman. He didn't carry them on his back, he carried them on top of his head. First, he had on his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. Look at that. So organized. I'd say he's a very orderly person, right? They're not just thrown in a bag. They're all organized into categories. Hmm. On the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called, Caps for sale! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! That's a pretty good price. Oh, he's happy too. Look at his mustache. Pretty cool. I think he loves doing this. He's quite dressed up as well. You'd have to take him seriously. He is dressed one step up. He went along and he called, caps for sale, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. One morning he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling, caps for sale, woo -hoo! caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think 
I'll go for a walk in the country, he said. And he walked out of town, slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his cats. So he's getting a bit hungry and business is kind of slow and that can happen if you own your own business. There are days that lots of people are purchasing and there's days that are kind of slow, but it's so smart. He said, you know, I'll just take a little nap. So he walks out of town. He's going to take a little nap. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. Well, it's a nice place for a rest, thought he. And he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little, back against the tree trunk, so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Look at that. Not one is out of place. Look at that. But you know, if you do this every day, it's kind of like riding a bicycle or a scooter, you get really good at it. Mm, he's taking a nap. That's a good trick with all those caps on your head to take a nap. Then he put his up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. They were all there, so he went to sleep. It was a nice place to take a nap. Very nice place to take a nap. But he's orderly. He made sure his caps weren't going to fall off. Oh, and he slept for a long time. Ooh, it's so easy to go to sleep if you sit still and the sun is out and it's warm. Oh, a good afternoon nap is the best. Oh. While we're all snuggled in, you might be able to catch one or two of those. My friend Ethan was napping when we popped by his house yesterday. He was taking a nap. So great. When he woke up, he was refreshed and ready. Ha ha! Now he's going to go sell his caps. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. Refreshed and ready, he's going to go sell his caps. Huh. Hmm. But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. Oh, land sakes. Oh, dear. Oh, my. He looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked on in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree, no caps. Hmm, wonder where they are. How could they just disappear? Then he looked up into the tree. What do you think he saw? He's looking up there. Uh. Then he looked up into the tree, and what do you think he saw? Ah! On every branch, a monkey. On every monkey, there was a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cap. Ah! That is where his caps are. Oh, my gosh. Oh! Well, the tree looks great. <laughs> I like how the tree looks. Oh, it's quite lovely. Oh dear, though. <laughs> Look at these guys, how they're all wearing the caps. Some of them only have one eye showing. Er. Huh. Huh. On every branch sat a monkey. The peddler looked up at the monkeys, and the monkeys looked at the peddler. Hmm. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. Yep, they're just staring at him. He's staring at them, and they're staring at him. Monkey see, monkey do. Just staring at each other in the quiet of the countryside. There you go. Hmm. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking his finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, <laughs> Oh! 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 Talking right back 
to him. This made the peddler angry. So he shook both hands at them and he said, You monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their hands back at him and they said, quite angry and he stamped his foot and he said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. By this time, the peddler was really very, very angry. He stomped both of his feet and shouted, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, oh dear, oh, oh. so angry, he pulled off his cap and he threw it on the ground and began to walk away. Oh, these monkeys. How do I sell my caps? Now I really can't eat because now I don't have any money and oh. I don't know, I guess he's not very well dressed to climb a tree. That's what some kids I know would do probably. So he threw his cap on the ground and he began to walk away. <gasps> and then each monkey pulled off his cap. Oh, I bet you already know what's gonna happen. Every single monkey pulled off their caps. <gasps> and all the gray caps and the brown caps and the blue caps and the red caps came flying out of the tree. Woo! Oh, wouldn't you love to see that? Like a bunch of kites flying out of a tree. Oh, that would really be remarkable. Actually, kind of beautiful. But oh my gosh, what is the peddler thinking or feeling? Oh my gosh. Oh, so the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his checkered cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and the red caps on the very top. Oh, look how he's organizing them. This reminds me of when I get to do Legos with my grandkids. All four of them are quite wonderful at Legos. I love it when they open their bags of Legos and we get to put all the categories together. Look how smart this peddler is. Does he look concerned about the monkeys? No, he doesn't. Oh, where are the monkeys? Oh, where did they go? Where did those monkeys go? And I can't hear them either. Hmm. Where did those monkeys go? Oh. And slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. <laughs> Off he goes. Off he goes to sell his caps. He had a spurt of anger, but it seems like he's okay now. Yeah? Yeah, he looks fine. He looks totally fine. The cats are organized. He's going back into town. Uh. Look, when I do this, it does tell us all about, all about this incredible Russian artist. This incredible Russian who became American artist. She's so famous. Her paintings are in the Smithsonian. Whoa. They're in lots of museums. I think the last museum might have been in Santa Fe. Her works travel around the world so everybody can see them. I love that she wrote this book, Slobodkina. Oh, it's a really good name, right? 
really great name. Okay, now that you know what happens. Oh, 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 the book, I'm, the back of the book, I must tell you. This book won a blue ribbon. Blue ribbon book. Lewis Carroll's Shelf Award. What? Look at all of the great things they're saying about Esper. Yeah. So on the back of the book, the people who published this book are bragging about the artist, the illustrator, and the author. Now that you know the story, look, what do you see behind the tree? What? There was a hint on the front about what was going to happen. Tracy, do you see that? You and I both know a lot of monkeys disguised as children. <laughs> I love this so much. Oh, I fell in love with it again. Would you believe I've had this book my whole adult life and I never paused long enough to read about this extraordinary artist? Now I have to go find her work. The next time I'm back at the Smithsonian, the next time I'm in Santa Fe, I have to look and see if it's still there. I just love that artist are artist are artist, and you are too. And as we leave, I'm going to say a second thank you. I'm saying a second thank you to my friend Karen Johnson, who's making these masks, and my friend Katherine Albright, because while we're all snuggled in, there are people wearing these masks every day, working very, very hard to get everybody well, right, to help those people who need to get better. So Tigger and I will close with that. And I'm here tomorrow, tomorrow's Saturday. So Saturday morning, if you're about to lose a tooth, I'm just saying you might want to tune in tomorrow morning. It's about teeth and the tooth fairy, right? I want to thank my cameraman, Dexter Adolph John III, and I want to thank the most amazing social activist who's also get, making sure this gets to you, Miss Tracy Clyburn. Thank you very much, Tracy. I'm glad you're here. And Neely Reynolds, we started with your song. We always start with your song from the kite because it's just the perfect thing. So thank you for your beautiful music. We're using it every day. And as we leave, I'm going to remind you the voice you're hearing is Marissa Sykes, who played The Little Mermaid at Kids Who Care in Fort Worth, Texas. And this summer, somehow we're doing Look Up. And this is from Look Up. Marissa Sykes. See you tomorrow. Contrails in the sky, planes on which I'd like to